All right, the previous video talked about some of the interesting results which experiments tell us about nucleophilic substitution reactions, in particular this type of nucleophilic substitution reaction. And in this video, I'm going to talk about a slightly different substitution reaction which uh, undergoes very interesting results which are different from those which were talked about in the previous video. So let's just go through a reaction under very similar conditions but not exactly the same. Almost, this, almost exactly the same but not quite. So we're going to start with 2-chlorobutane and to 2-chlorobutane we are going to add water. So we're adding water. Now we're adding 2-chlorobutane as one enantiomer. And specifically this would be the S enantiomer. Now something interesting happens when we do this reaction just with water. If we look at the results of this experiment we see that we get a little bit of this product where we have this is 2-butanol and in addition to that, we get not just one product like we did earlier, we get a second major product. And if you compare the configuration of the starting stereo center in, in the starting material to that in our products, you'll see that in the second product we have inversion, which is what we had in the, in the previous example, so this would be this is R here. And here we have retention. So we have retention. This is, this is S. So we get two products. Two products in, in addition to uh, HCl in as well. So two products, not just one product, and a mixture of inversion and retention. So this stands in contrast to what we saw in the previous example and uh, type of reaction where we only saw one type of product. Here we get two. So let's look dig a little deeper. Here's some more results which experiments tell us about this reaction. So if we start to analyze the rate of this reaction, so let's say that we we keep the concentration of water constant and we're going to change the concentration of 2-chlorobutane. So we change the concentration of 2-chlorobutane. And so this is the concentration of 2-chlorobutane. There's the rate. And we find that as we double the concentration of 2-chlorobutane, the rate goes up linearly, as we'd expect. So um, if we double the concentration of 2-chlorobutane, the rate doubles. And if we quadruple the concentration, the, the rate quadruples at all. So this reaction is what we say is first order in 2-chlorobutane, which we can call our, our substrate or electrophile. Now let's look at what happens to the rate of water. If we, if we change the concentration of water and keep the concentration of 2-chlorobutane the same. So if we do that, we see that the rate actually doesn't change very much. So in fact, the rate doesn't change at all. As we increase the concentration of water from if we double it, triple it, quadruple it, the rate doesn't change whatsoever. So in fact, we would call this reaction actually zero order in water. So overall, Overall, the rate only depends on the concentration of 2-chlorobutane. So it's overall a first order reaction. And a uh, reaction, that's not a word, reaction. So this stands in contrast to the previous example where we saw that that type of substitution reaction was a, overall a second order reaction. It was a bimolecular uh, process. And here it, it's a it's a first order reaction. Okay, so that's the second interesting piece of, of information. So there's a mixture of retention 
and inversion. And not only that, it's only first order overall, you know, in substrate. And here's the, in, the last really very interesting piece of information about this reaction. So let's, let's say we start with our two chlorobutane and, and let's say we compare it to the rate, we measure the rate of this reaction and then we compare it and measure the rate of this reaction with one chlorobutane. And we ask ourselves, okay, which reaction is faster? We keep everything the same and we ask ourselves which reaction is faster. As it turns out, this reaction is very slow, very, very, very slow. And uh, the reaction with 2-chlorobutane is faster. But if we compare this to the reaction with tert-butyl chloride, so uh, we find that this reaction is even faster. This is the fastest reaction among these three. And looking back and thinking back to nomenclature, remember this is called a primary, this type of carbon is a primary carbon, this is secondary, and this is tertiary. So what we find is that tertiary is fastest, faster than secondary, which is faster than primary. So, and actually much, much faster than primary. So that again is, is in stark contrast to the previous examples where the previous type of substitution reaction where we had one of them, uh, the primary was much faster than secondary, which was much, much, much faster than tertiary. So let's see, tertiary is faster than secondary, which is faster, much faster than primary. So again, the question we sort of have to come up with here is how, how do we explain this? How do we explain that under these conditions, uh, we have a mixture of retention and inversion, we have first order overall, and it's tertiary is faster than secondary, which is much faster than primary. So what mechanism can we come up with that will explain these results and, and help us understand how this exactly this, sub, this type of substitution reaction is occurring? I'm gonna talk about that in the next series of videos.